Igor Kripinski from uh, Intrahack.org is an uh, engineer who is into the energy transformation. Um, and I'm going to talk about how the energy transformation went when Russia announced that you had to pay ruble for gas and how the energy transformation in uh, Estonia is happening. We made a separate video about this project where he wants to get kids involved. So that's underneath here. You can basically take a look at that. But I first uh, I separately wanted to talk about this energy transformation. Igor, you're, um, you're an engineer and you're, uh, you're the chairman of the, of the Association of Engineers of all the engineers in, uh, in Estonia. If we talk about the energy transformation in, uh, in Estonia, when did it really happen? You know, when did really that awareness came, uh, started to happen? Actually, I would say that we made the first step something like maybe 20 years ago, but basically almost all, I would say, buildings in the networks used uh, either natural gas or oil. Mm -hmm. And then something like 20 years ago, we started to construct uh, biomass or the wood chip, uh, uh, wood chips, uh, boiler houses. And we have a lot of wood here. We have a lot of wood, yes. So yeah. quite a lot of land for Estonia is covered with wood. Mm -hmm. So we started to construct boiler houses and CHPs. So basically combined heat and power plant, which produces and electricity and heat. So we started to transfer that. And actually nowadays, all the biggest cities in Estonia, Tallinn, Tartu, Pärnu, and etc. They are actually using like biomass as the main fuel. Yeah. But still, in the balance, no coal, no oil, no gas. No, uh, no. We actually uh, don't have coal at all. We have never used coal. Uh, we use oil in some smaller amounts, but about the gas, we still were using quite a lot of gas. And the reason is that no, there's technical reasons because if you're using like biomass uh, boiler house, it should like uh, how to say it's good when you use it for the base load. But when we're talking about the peak load, when yeah. for example you wake up in the morning and it's one hour, gas goes exactly. up. Yeah. Exactly. In minus 20, then the gas is like very fast and very the good. Peakers. The peakers. Exactly. The peakers. Exactly. So then, then we use gas yeah. but yes uh, previous year we had some problems with that yeah you basically are you have some kind of a neighbor who basically is not completely always the same kind of morals which you have so when you had to pay in rubles for natural gas last year that was exactly a year ago right and then how oh, how much of the gas came from Russia at that, at that point yeah I would say that approximately 100% of the gas came from Russia yeah. and I would say that about the consumption uh, Estonia was using something maybe half billion of cubic meters of gas per year and so yeah previous year when the war in Ukraine started when Russia invaded Ukraine then uh, one of the reasons was that Russia said that hey now you have to pay for gas in Russian rubles. Yeah. We and uh, most of the European countries have not agreed with that. And basically, Russia just stopped the flow. And we had to, I would say that in some months, just to, how to say, rebuild our... What, 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 what month was that? Was it the middle of the winter? Yeah, because, I mean, the, uh, Ukraine was invaded in February, right? Yes. I mean, so this was almost the end of the winter. Yes, that was uh, Russia invaded Ukraine in February and in March they basically stopped the gas flow to uh, to Estonia and uh, due to the fact that we're living in quite a cold climate, yeah. we're actually heating our houses until the end of April. So we had to somehow manage to stay until the end of April and also think uh, with which fuel will, will we, how to say, heat our houses in September. Uh -huh. Because one thing is that the yeah, winter... Yeah, four or five months to prepare. Exactly, exactly. So this was quite tough, but we had maybe uh, three main things that we have done. First First of all, in Estonia, we don't have any heat storages, but in our neighbor country, Latvia, we have a gas storage called Inchukalns. Basically, this is the gas storage under the ground. Mm -hmm. So we actually reserved quite a lot of gas there in the gas storage, so we could pump that out. Second thing that we do in uh, other country near Estonia, Lithuania, they have an LNG terminal, floating terminal in Klaipeda. So we booked some amount of this gas. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the last thing that we did is actually that we started to construct our own LNG terminal. So basically uh -huh. in a town called Paldiski and in Finnish town called Inko, in parallel we started to construct a, how to say, terminal which could, uh, uh, could input. Uh, so normally it takes about a year to design, two years for uh, for licenses and then for, uh, two years to build it. So normally a five-year project. How long did it take you? Yeah, actually it took us something like maybe five months or four months, something <laughs> like that. So because... because basically Under pressure? A uh, small pressure was. Yeah. So basically it was yeah. just a question of uh, staying alive yeah. so whether we'll have like uh, our go uh, house is heated yeah. so yeah and the industry and all that kind of stuff so but you were able to go through it I mean it, there were no big shortages and and what happened to the price of gas I mean if you compare it to what an average I mean 
Estonia is a fantastic country. It really looks very modern and things, but the income is about half of the Netherlands. Yeah. So uh, how, what happened to the energy prices for people who uh, want to basically do their homes? Yeah, so with the price, it was not so good. I would say that about the security of supply, we managed to fix that. But if you talk about the pricing, it was, well, it was not so good. So if, for example, in beginning of 2021, we had the price of gas something like maybe 20 euros per megawatt hour. Yeah. Then if you remember that in the whole Europe, in the end of 2021, yes, yeah. it started to increase. And actually, it was increasing before the war in Ukraine. Yeah. So actually, there are, were other reasons. So uh, there, there was like shortages of gas and etc. And I would say that, yes, uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine, the price was something like maybe 300 or even 400 per yes. euros per, per... 20 times as much as normal. And then and then you basically worked, worked through the summer, 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 high pressure, everything strategy. And, and now? Yes, so now we managed to fix this problem. So first of all, the prices for the gas and the world market also have actually a little bit declined. And also... we A lot, yeah. a lot yes. Yeah. And, we, and we made also one other thing. We have uh, one interesting fuel that we have here in Estonia which is called oil shale it's like a rock which is quite similar to coal yeah. so we have this like oil. most horrible fuel ever I mean it's you need to heat it up to a hundred degrees to make it even liquid and it's all the cruise ships are doing that it's it's but you have it yes we have it it has uh, exactly as Vincent mentioned it has some emissions yes. but basically when you are talking about like uh, staying, alive. staying alive then we started to shift our boiler house from gas to uh, shale oil yeah. so but actually we haven't shifted that, but we made this like a possibility to burn both fuels so you can burn either gas or you can burn a shale uh, oil yeah. and because this fuel is domestic we could manage to keep the price on the right level so uh -huh. that basically we were not connected with the how to say world market prices mm -hmm. and one more thing which was good in I suppose it was and in Estonia in the Europe I would say the winter was not so cold so yeah. it was it was actually totally okay yeah. but usually start to use gas when you have this like temperature like decreasing where, where, where very low yeah. so we stayed alive and of course uh, people had to pay a little bit uh, bigger bills but the good thing is that our government actually made some subsidies for the people mm. so basically if the price was too high then they paid some additional amount from their self so yeah, yeah. And do you now know what the equivalent, I mean, if you know, if you maybe tell, normally pay 60 cents or 50 cents for a cubic meter of gas, now you have wood and you have, you know, tar and you have uh, liquid gas. What kind of pricing are you now on? Yes, so for example, in Tallinn, in the city where we are sitting at the moment, we have quite big district heating network and the price for the customers is actually 97 euro per megawatt hour. So which is basically bigger uh, larger that we had still before. five times as much five yeah. times as much yeah. but but it's okay but actually people can afford themselves yeah and they're subsidizing on that or not uh, at the moment uh subsidizing until the end of april if i'm correct so until the heating period mm -hmm. but starting from may it will not be subsidized anymore and next winter also people have and did it also influence i mean this is of course a dream for an uh, for an heating engineer right i mean it's like you can insulate buildings you can trade you can be more efficient what happened with society when you are put to the pressure test like this so I would say that maybe if you want to take a look at the positive uh, things so when the energy actually was cheap no one was interested in the thing so how the electricity comes from so what is the elect electricity market uh, how how because the insulation of my building but yeah. when the energy prices went up yeah. people actually started to increase their awareness about in energy field so actually this is a positive thing yeah. so now they understand what is heat pump what is I don't know gas boiler and etc so this was this was actually a quite good thing yeah. so now the people are thinking about it are they thinking or acting they are in thinking and acting and they're asking for advice for example we're sitting in this uh, um, quite uh, uh, high building mm -hmm. at the moment on the 21st uh, floor but actually nearby we have uh, one hotel which is also um, uh, quite uh, high something like maybe maybe 100 meters uh, high mm -hmm. and they actually have a gas boiler which is situated on the roof and when there was a problem there were problems with the gas pricing and security of supply the owner of this building approached us said hey can you design me an oil pipe I said that what he said that can you design me an oil pipe up to the 100 meters I said that why do you need that he said that he has a boiler which can bust, uh, combust and gas and oil mm. but because he's afraid that he will not get, get any gas uh, sure. via the network so that the hotel will stay alive so can you design this pipe so he was also thinking about maybe bringing this oil tank with the helicopter or something like that so there were such interesting things going on yeah.
Hey, so what did this, I mean, from you made the energy uh, transformation, it's a lot more expensive, but it is okay. Um, what is happening with the thinking of your neighbor? I mean, I, you have about 30% of the people are Russian you know, background. You're also Russian background. Uh, how is the country united now uh, in, in, in terms of the, the, the approach to uh, the Russian neighbor? Yeah, I would say that uh, mostly the people uh, people are united by Estonians. And actually, something like three weeks ago, we had elections. Yeah. And I was so, uh, suppose that the results of the elections show that we are a quite united country. Very outspoken prime minister, female prime minister, right? Exactly. We admit her very well. And uh, on the, how to say, eastern part of Estonia, we have there are some towns and districts which are basically maybe not so united, mm -hmm. which are voting for a other candidates. But it's very good in democracy that you have actually like different approaches. But uh, the election showed that most of the people uh, were for existing uh, existing uh, prime minister. Yeah, and they say, and the basic approach is don't use gas, don't use oil from Russia, and be tough towards and, and support Ukraine. You have been as a country, a small country, but you've been support. You've been one of the biggest supporters of the Ukraine, right? In terms of refugees and money. Yes, exactly. And actually in Estonia, we have also quite a lot of refugees which came here to Tallinn, to other cities. And uh, we're like usual people, we're quite a lot of supporting them. And uh, and actually, about if we're talking about energy, then I suppose that in the long term, gas is not a suitable fuel. So we can use it, gas, for some, I don't know, years or tens of years. But if we want to achieve, uh, uh, how to say, climate neutrality, then yeah. gas should be phased out. And what do you think will be the, the big things uh, to uh, get out of there? Yeah. No, again, it's like depends on the country. So if we're talking about Tallinn, so in Tallinn, in the moment we're using mainly wood chips as a fuel, then we're using some municipal waste that we're burning and the gas is used only for the peak loads. But we already started to design two big heat pumps here in Tallinn, uh, both 100 megawatt capacity. One heat pump will use wastewater, so basically the sewerage water to produce heating. And the second one will use um, uh, Baltic Sea water. So we'll actually, in, I suppose, two or three years, we'll construct these heat pumps mm -hmm. and we can actually quit the gas. What about nuclear? Nuclear, we're actually also thinking about it. And uh, Estonia never had a nuclear power plant. But at the moment, there are going negotiations that maybe we can construct, you know, this like small modular reactor, something like maybe 300 megawatts or 600 megawatts or something like that. So at the moment, negotiations are going on. And as I understood, by the end of the year, the government should take decision either go or not go. Interesting times, huh? Very interesting times, and I suppose that when I started to study energy matters, something like 25 years ago, it was totally like not a, not a good field. Everyone wanted to study IT and etc. Yeah. to become a lawyer. But now years gone by, and you are hot. You are on a really hot subject. Yeah. We are very hot and basically almost every every day I'm getting some phone call from radio or have to go to TV or whatever. So basically, yes. Or educate the kids. Or educate kids. Okay. What's the name of the website? Uh, it's called enerhack.org. Okay. Thanks, Igor. Thank you, Vincent.